Okay. I see I'm getting some viewers in. Apparently, I'm having difficulty with using Google Hangouts on my iPad 2. I have actually been live for 45 minutes on my iPad, but it did not show up for you all to see it in the live stream. So I'm confused as to what's happened here. So I'm just going back to my iPad to see if I can find where I'm live now so I can see your messages. So I'm actually using my laptop now. And now I can't see where I can see my text messages. Cameraman, screen share, and then there's chat. Okay. So can you hear me and am I actually live now? Because I thought I was live for 45 minutes and thought that no one was in the chat room. So I have been sewing. So if someone can enter some a chat message so I can see if it's working, would be great. Okay, so I see where my message went out, but I'm not sure if this is actually working. At this point, I can't see anything on my iPad. For Can someone out there tell me if they can see and hear me? I'm actually working on flying geese units for my Bonnie Hunters so along. And I have sewn all of them using the quilt in a day method where you start with two very good sized squares and then you sew them together. And I have already done all of those parts because I was live for 45 minutes and didn't know I was live. or didn't know I wasn't live. I was live, but it wouldn't let anybody else see. And I'm still not sure if anyone can hear me because I don't have anything coming up in the chat box. If someone could type something in the chat box would be great. I see where there's at least 25 viewers in the room.
So the next step, I have sewn all of my units together at this point, and I put a slit in here so that I can press the seams on both sides towards my background fabric. I still don't see any text coming through. So let me check on my phone to see if it'll work. My videos. I still don't get anyone telling me if they're there or not. So I'm still not sure if this is working. So in chat. Can someone post something in the chat box for me, please? Okay. For some reason, it's not coming up on my machine, but now I can see them on my phone. So, <laughs> sorry I've been harassing you. <laughs> I am having true technical difficulties. Every time I try to go live, it takes something different. So this time I tried to schedule a chat so that it would come up to let everybody know what I was doing. And then I waited for it to start, it didn't start. So I went out and manually started the chat. And then it didn't let anybody know that I was on the other chat because it had me scheduled for the chat that I had scheduled. So I have gone into the old chat after 45 minutes of sewing by myself. <laughs> and now I see everyone was over on the other side waiting. So I'm just going back up through the comments now from when I actually started. So I'll just do a few shout outs. Got Gail White from Pennsylvania, Paula Jo David. And Gail White says she got the notification a minute ago. Darlene Farmer. Petra Finken, okay, so she's saying she, she could hear me when I was asking loud and clear and she could see me. Got Ruth Rowe, welcome Ruth. Quilting Pieces says hi T. And apparently she was, um, who was this letting me know that it was delayed? Sid Malucci. Got Jill Domer. 
Kimberly Williams Jones, Sandra G. Adger, Debbie Williams, Okay, so now that I know you can hear me, the sad thing is, is that I was sewing for 45 minutes and I've already done all of my sewing on the flying geese units. I'm using the quilt in the day method. Where you start with two squares and for the size that I needed, the size squares I needed was for my background squares, which is my white to start at six inches. And then for my goose fabric, I needed a square that was four and a half inches. I actually put those two squares, laid them on top of each other, right sides together. And so I drew a diagonal line through the four and a half inch square. And I centered that square on top of the bigger white background square. And no, the ends do not meet. You're, you're going to have three quarters of an inch all the way around. And you can eyeball that because it's not, you don't have to be dead on in the center. Hi, Eric. <laughs> and I then sew diagonally on that and then I cut it apart. So then it was, when I flipped it up, I had two big pieces and I actually put them together. I don't even have it now together because I've sewn and cut everything. But basically I put those two pieces together and then I drew a diagonal line the opposite direction. So at first I had stitched this way. And then the second time I came back and stitched the other way. And so I've now cut those apart. So that I can press the seam allowance toward the light, I put a little clip in here. And now I'm ready to press these toward the light fabrics and that slit helps so that I can press each end towards the light. And that slit's not going to end up in the quilt because it's actually going to be trimmed away when we scrub up. So I will be doing that with all of these units so they look a little weird here, but I'm going to scrub out my flying geese. She has a ruler and I have it packed into one of my projects, of course, so I don't have the actual ruler to do that. So I like to take these to my press station and press those so they're nice and flat before I trim. And I happen to have a few of them here. And I see we got someone from Germany in. Thank you, Wichita, Kansas. It's Paula. So I pressed a few of these already. And because I have my ruler pack, I'm just going to use a regular square ruler at this point. So, the project that I'm actually working on is Bonnie Hunter's of www.quiltville.com. She has a mystery quilt called On Ringo Lake, and I'm just using her color choices for this. And this is step two. She still has the instructions up on her blog. They will not remain up forever. So if you're interested in it, go to her blog at www.quiltville.com. And click on the Ringo Lake link and it'll give you the in intro and parts one and part two. Part one, we made a lot of nine patches and part two, we're actually making flying geese. I'm not gonna give you any sizes or the number. You'll have to go and download those instructions. Let's see who else is in here. We got Catherine Hill from South California. Hi, Catherine. Are you safe from the fires that are going on in your area in, the, in Southern California area? I saw videos on Facebook today of the fires and they are really bad. Hi, Carolyn. So now I'm just using my square up ruler to square these units up. And I'll just go ahead and do one for you and then show it to you. I am just so sorry that we didn't start on time. I was here. 
thought no one was available at this time, thought maybe it was a bad time. So very sorry. But here is my perfect flying geese unit done the quilt in a day method. I see what Catherine has announced that she is about 50 miles southeast. So I pray you stay safe, you and your family. It's just very devastating to see what's going on on the news in the Ventura, California area. Those wildfire, those wildfires look very dangerous. I saw a lot of people were in their cars trying to leave and it just, it just seemed like everything was on fire. So I'll just pray for those people. So using the quilt in the day method, you use the two larger squares and you still end up with four flying geese when you're done. Yeah, I can't imagine, uh, Eric, that that air quality is pretty bad because it looked bad on the news. And I saw where some of the reporters were helping to rescue horses as well. So I'm just trying to concentrate here while I try to figure out how to line up my scrub ruler to trim these units because I'm not using the right tool. If I had my quilt in the day ruler, it just has grid marks that will tell me exactly where to place my ruler. So I have been working on some other projects. I saw a picture online of this quilt pattern here. And I have some triangles that have been cut out. I actually got them donated to me, but they're not 60 degree triangles like what's used in this pattern here but I decided to use them anyway. So I do have this part of the project piece that's in another room right now, so I can't show you that. And what I do have in here is some, I have gifts that I'm giving to my group. And for my scrap quilting club, I gave everybody a fat quarter, so they were different. And then I gave out these little boxes here. And they had different sentiments on top. Some of them were like, hello. And then I also had like pictures of people with their quilts or doing show and tell. Some of our group photos. I actually made little puzzles that I put in and then they can open those. And the only reason I have this one is because she wasn't at Scrap Club last week. So I couldn't show that early. For my group that's coming Saturday, I don't think any of them watch me live.
<laughs> okay. I think I'm back. I must have had some interference in my... Am I back? Okay, it looks like I'm live from my end. I had some interference, I guess, in my line and it just took me out. <laughs> so someone let me know if I'm back yet. from my stash as well because I didn't even have 40 pieces. But I've been making jelly rolls for gifts. So I have a lot of these. Also, I'm going to be, you're getting the inside tip, I'm going to be doing a drawing where I'll probably give out two of these. And then I'm also having a few other little small gifts that I may give out. And I'm also going to select one of my viewer of the year that's going to be selected as well. So they'll be getting a gift. And I'm trying to think if there was anything else in my room that I could share with you. And not really. My, I'm trying to think of the name of my arrow quilt that I was doing as a block of the month, the Paradox Point. I have not done any more work on that. I don't see where anyone else was working on those blocks. So if anybody is working on those, just let me know and I'll get back on those. But I didn't make it a priority because I've never got confirmation that anybody else was actually making those blocks. And so I started working on some other things that I wanted to do. I do have everything still out to it. So let's see what the comment section is doing. Okay, so I'm just getting confirmation that I'm back live. Okay, so other Christmas things, I don't have a lot. I haven't done anything. I was supposed to make some of the wallets from Atkinson Designs, where she has the fabric wallet, and my family really loved those but I haven't made any. So I may do about three or four of those. Just the daughter. I have a sister and a niece that really likes them. She wants to have it there this year, so I'm very glad and I don't have to worry about it, except that I do have to still do all the cooking. <laughs> still checking the comment section. So what are you all doing for Christmas? Have you made plans yet? Are you making any gifts for any family? And I even have some of my little triangle pieces sewed too. I just looked up and saw some of those. But I've been sewing just these scrappy units together. And like I said, these are not 60 degree. They're a little bit taller than they are wider at the base. But they will still make the hexagon when it's sewn together. It'll just be a little bit more elongated. Oh, congratulations, Ruth, on your Trirex quilt. That's one of my favorite tools. I'm going to work with that and see if I can come up with some different things to do with it. Or at least make quilts that I can keep in my stash because most of the quilts where I've done that technique, I've given them away. I only have one. And so when I do lectures, I only really have one quilt to show, and then I just have a lot of samples.
you just uh carolyn you just received your trirex rulers i'm assuming and paula jill wants to know is that a baby lock and i'll have to say which one both of these are baby locks both of my machines are no longer being produced. You may find them used. This is the oldest one on here that I sew with. This is the Baby Lock Elagio, and I use it for piecing. And then this one over here is the Elissimo. It's the original Elissimo that came out. And I think I got two upgrades. And Carolyn is saying that she's blacked out. I still have power. I'm hoping that she can get back in. And then uh, Linda saying she have difficulty sewing triangles together. Uh, Linda, what type of triangles? Are you talking about half square triangles or are you talking about 60 degree triangles, trirex triangles, because there's different kinds and they require different things. So I have about 40 of my flying geese made. Okay, so you have difficulty sewing 60 degree triangle. Even though these are not 60 degree, I'll show you something. I've got some pairs sewn over here. So I've got some pairs that I've already sewn. And... Basically, I got Angela coming in. She's from the UK. Hi, Angela. Okay, so you've got the Paradox Point book and you were doing that. I think I've done about three or maybe four of those triangles. So I'll start back on those. So basically, um, I'm sewing my triangles upside down. So let me get two that are not sewn together just so you can see. And, and again, these are not 60 degree. And the reason why you can tell, that, how you can easily tell that they're not 60 degree is that I've got, when I try to put this one side up with the triangle to match it up, it's not the right size. So I've got extra there. So the only way that I can sew these things together would be around in a circle. But that's not what I wanted. So what I opted to do was to turn it upside down. Now these were cut with a die cut. So the points have been cut off, but basically I'm just lining up from edge to edge. And then you have to make sure that you really are stitching a one quarter inch seam. And that's what I have here, where I have the one quarter inch seam. Anytime that I stitch these type of triangles, I like to press my seams open. And I'm just going to use my little wood and iron for right now because I don't have the other one. So I would have something like that. When I go to add the next pieces to it, so let's say I wanted to add this piece. I still want to make sure that my points, my intersections line up. Now on these, the points are off, but if I had not cut the points off, if these weren't die cut where the point was off, you would have a little tip extending and that tip would be exactly one quarter of an inch away from the top. So you might see those up at the top. The tricky part is when you're trying to sew, these pieces need to be pressed. That's why they're up here, they're in my press area. 
when you have so many of these sewn together and then you decide you want to sew into rows if you can see this little intersection right here i always put a pin through that and then to line it up because i think that's where most people have the biggest problem is lining this up when it's time to sew them together so i would put a pin through here and then let's just say that my next intersection is here and this is not what i'm sewing together but i just want to show you then i i did it again okay for some reason i lost my screen went dark i lost power again but i'm back on so then what i would do if i was connecting these two rows for every intersection i want to make sure that i put that pin right back through the center there Let me take that off and get my seam open. That's because I have not pressed these seams open yet, so they're not laying flat like I want them to for this demo. Kind of impromptu. Okay. So now I've got just the pin sticking through. I don't know if you can see the end of the pin. There it goes. Once that pin is sticking through, I want to make sure that pin is straight. And then what I do is I take two additional pins and then I pin on the side with that. That way I can keep my seam allowance open and I make sure that those seams will not move. And then as I'm sewing, when I get to those pins, I'll take them out a stitch before I get to them. So what I end up with is something that's pinned like that. So all of my seam allowances are down. And then as I'm sewing this, I'll just take this pin out right before I get to it. And I find that's the biggest problem with the 60 degree triangles. I guess my area is having problems with the internet. So I'm sorry if we're going in and out. But I can try to do maybe do some sort of a video on that. Okay, good night, Angela. Thank you for stopping in. She said it's 2 a.m., 2.20 a.m. That was very nice of you. So now I'm back to squaring up these half square triangles. No, these flying geese, not half square triangles. So is anyone else working on any Christmas gifts? I don't think I have anything else to add other than the drawing that's going to be coming up and that's about it for me. It's saying that I'm live, and, or can you all still hear me? So Paula says she has a Brother Quattro 3 sewing machine. 
Linda, I hope I answered your questions about the 60 degree triangles. Is anyone on the live chat working on the quilters patch block of the month? Thank you, Darlene. And Darlene says she's working on a few small quilts. Eric's got three quilts to be quilted, or three more to be quilted. Thank you, Ruth. I hope to do more and I hope to learn this technology. It's a problem for me, so I don't know how it's gonna work. I'll try to schedule another one and hopefully it'll work next time. And Linda has finished four simple table runners and a snowman wall quilt. I love snowman quilts. I haven't done any Christmas decoration yet. <laughs> I haven't made anything for Christmas. I have not even pulled the decorations out of storage since my daughter says she was going to do that. I was like, great, I may put the wreath on the front door. And Darlene is asking about, she wants to try machine quilting, any thoughts here? I'm going to assume that you're talking about free motion machine quilting. Is that correct? Hi, Lisa from Ontario. She was having difficulty with the chat, which I apparently had difficulty with the chat and the whole entire going live process today. I was somewhere else and everybody else was waiting somewhere else. <laughs> so Catherine has a quilt to be quilted and she hasn't done any decor decorating for Christmas either. So I'm glad I'm not the only one. Um, answering Darlene's question, I'm just going to assume for right now that she's talking about free motion machine quilting. And it's a little bit different with my, when I was using my home machine on the Singer, one of the things that they told me to do was to increase my stitch length all the way up to four which was highest it would go which was i thought was very weird because if i'm doing free motion quilting then i shouldn't have to worry about my thread length you would think but for some reason if i did not change it then it would not sew so make sure you first check your manual to make sure you set your machine up properly some people have the feed dogs that drop. Some of them have feed dogs where you have to cover them. Sometimes I wouldn't cover my feed dogs that needed to be covered. Sometimes I would like the extra traction. It would help me a little bit in guiding my quilt. So you can try covering your feed dogs and not, or, or if your machine has one where you drop the feed dogs. Um, the main thing, though, once you get ready to start, if you're doing, say, like a bed quilt on your home machine or if it's a good size quilt, I would start from the center and work my way out. And that way, any fullness is working its way out, and I'm not going to just end up with some fullness right in the middle of the quilt. I'm assuming that you have pinned very well or done some sort of stabilizing like either basting spray which i just try not to use at home when i was working i used to do it a lot at work because we had big conference rooms and then i could just clean up the conference room but at home we got so many other things in the room that i don't want that on my stuff so i pin 
and one product that I did like when I was pinning my quilts was these things that you put on your safety pins. Like a little cover. And so as you saw, when I pulled this pin out, it was already open. And that way I can put all of my pins into my container. And you know, with regular pins that don't have those, they would get tangled up in here and then the pins would all be stuck together. And that prevented those from being stuck together. And I did pin like a hand width apart. So every, from here to there, I had a pin. Um, when you actually get to the free motion part, you got all kind of things that can help you. One of the things is the if you feel like you're not getting enough traction, you, you can't move and it's not your feed dogs, it's the bed of your machine catching it. There are sliders that you can purchase to help with that. You can get um, machine sewing gloves. I like the machine, machingers, I think they're called. Let me see if I can find it. I haven't used them in a while. <laughs> I have a drawer underneath. Let me see if they're in there. I probably put this stuff somewhere else because I don't use it on a regular basis anymore. So here is my machine quilting container. So they are they are called machingers. And these are the thinnest gloves that I found. You can use garden gloves if you like, but I find they get a little hot or get hot faster. I get hot anyway since I started hot flashing. Now, these gloves are awfully dirty, but they have little tips on them and they give you some traction for when you're moving the quilt around. And they come in different sizes small, medium, medium, large, things like that. So I recommend that for moving your stuff around. Got to put my drawer back up. <laughs> and then the other thing with the hardest part of doing free motion when you first start is to move your hands in coordination with how fast you're push pushing your foot pedal. And it's one of those things that is easily said, but you really can't explain it until you actually sit down and try to do it. Because you've got to move your hands in a set speed to make sure your stitches are similar in size. They're not going to be 100% the same size, but you don't want to have good stitches and then end up with a quarter inch skip somewhere. So basically, I would practice. And you can practice on some things that you can make pot holders with, something like that. So maybe um, I have never free motion quilted on this Elagio, but I have free motion quilted on Singer. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do a video of me just doing some basic free motion on that. And maybe that will help you, Darlene. Because I'm not sure even how to do it on here. I'm sure it will but I have to do some investigation. So let me go back through the comments here. Okay. Ruth saying she's just starting to do some basic home quilting too. Would love to know more. So maybe I'll do a video on that. And I don't know if you all want me to do a video live so you can ask, ask me questions. I can just bring my singer in here because I can go straight to working with my singer. If you want me to do it live, let me know. Katia says she's working on a snowflake quilt for winter. Hi. Welcome to my channel. Got Kathy. And she says she's finally getting to watch me live. Thank you, Kathy, for watching. Got Aaron Stewart saying 
Are you still planning on the disappearing nine pack so long? You said you might do one during your first live stream. Yes, I did. And then life got in the way. I, I planned to do that in September or no, I mean, not September. I planned to do that, I thought, in November or October. I can't remember which month. And then I got sick. And so I didn't do it. I had it planned and everything and did not do it. So we can still do a disappearing nine patch so along. Maybe we should wait until January after the holidays and do it, maybe. Ruth is asking about saying that she has been doing basic walking foot quilting with her machine and she doesn't have a lot of space and wondered if she it would be easier if she did a quilt as you go yes it would be easier if you did a quilt as you go as far as the amount of things you've got to put under your arm on your sewing machine so yes but you'll be surprised at how much you can actually get under that arm too if you manipulate your quilt the right way Okay, so Darlene is saying live would be great for a machine quilting. And I can do that. Do you want me to do that next Wednesday? I can do that next Wednesday because that I can easily do that over doing a disappearing nine patch right now because I have to pull a fabric for a disappearing nine patch. And right now I got too many projects that I'm working on. But if we're doing some quilting, I can just pull two pieces of muslin and do that. And what's, I don't have a calendar in front of me. Let me see what is next week. So today is the 6th. So the 13th, do you all think you will be too busy to come back to a live stream or what? next wednesday be good for you okay aaron so we're going to do the disappearing nine patch will start in january and katia wants to know i'm i'm hoping that i'm saying your name right have you ever used minky or cuddle on the back of your quilt on the long arm? I just uploaded two, well, I uploaded, I thought two videos where I done minky. One was a crazy quilt and the other was a quilt where I had some hand embroidered flowers. But yes, I did. I um, just did that. Uh, tips for that? is a lot of people will tell you to put your minky on where the the straightest the least stretchiest part is on your leaders i'm still reading the comments let me answer finish this question but most people will tell you to put the minky on where the like your salvage edge because that's the least stretchiest it's on the leader and I actually did the reverse. I actually put the stretchiest part, which is the width of the minky, onto the leader. So I put my stretchiest part on there and I made sure I pinned very well. And the reason why I did that is because when I'm rolling the quilt on the long arm, the tension can pull the stretchy part and make it pucker to me. So it made more sense for me to put the more stable side on what where i'm rolling so that that part wouldn't stretch as much and i did it twice and both of those quilts came out perfect so if that's your question with minky i would put the minky on so that the stretchiest side is onto the leader which is exactly opposite Jolene, we're going to try for seven central standard time again is that good for you this time I'm going to try to make sure that I'm not in the wrong chat room. 
He's asking what time for next week with the, we're going to do free motion quilting on the home sewing machine. I'm just going back through the comments now. So uh, Ruth, for your Eastern Standard Time, it would be 8 o'clock p.m. <laughs> Thank you, Katia, for confirming. I am saying her name right. I have one of those names that get butchered and I just let it go. And so I have a hard time saying other people's names too. So I'm always asking. That's why I'm very conscious of it. Okay. Okay, so next Wednesday will be our next live and we're going to actually do free motion quilting on the sewing machine. And I'm just going to show you some very basic things. We're gonna just talk about pinning and stuff like that. And then we'll do a few uh, stitches like meandering, loops, maybe a spiral, maybe a star, something very basic. Okay, so I'm just watching the comment section, making sure nothing is coming up. Um, I have about 40 of these already on my design wall. When I was making these, I actually cut 40 too many. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention to the math. And so just while I'm here, I have squared up quite a few of them now. And I'll show you my design wall in a bit. <laughs> Ruth saying it's a date she'll have her teapot on. So I have no idea what time it is now. Let me see. like 8.44, so we'll go like another 15 minutes. I think we've now been on about an hour, and I try to do at least an hour, or try to stay to an hour, but we'll go ahead and go to nine o'clock since I messed up the whole start time anyway. Got Eric, he wants to know what is my favorite quilt block. Actually, it's very strange. My favorite technique is the second whack technique, but my actual favorite quilt block, which is very strange, is the churn dash block. For some reason, I love the churn dash blocks and I like doing them in different sizes in the same quilt. I like where you put something in the middle of the churn dash, like maybe put a different little mini block inside of the center of the churn dash. I like the churn dash when the sides are equal and I like them when they're not equal. So I'm just, I don't know why I'm partial to that particular pull block, but that's what it is. Yes, it's 948 Eastern, Darlene. It was, yeah, eight. It's, uh, 8.45 here for me right now. And my clocks and my internet times could be a little different than yours too because I'm using my computer time. Okay, Carolyn, so we'll see you next week. And Ruth's saying she's got to go. Bye-bye, Ruth. Thank you for coming in and thank you for waiting around for me. I appreciate that.
And the reason why I read what's in the comment section is because when it goes live, it doesn't keep the comments with the video, so they just disappear. So that way we can have some documentation on why I'm saying particular things and not just me talking about something on a different subject. These geese were fast to sew up this way, but it does take a little while to square them up. You gotta have some patience. But I like the fact that for me, this is the most perfect way that I can get my geese. I actually hate squaring up when I'm doing half square triangles, but on the flying geese, I just can't figure out how to make it work any other way. There was a product out a long time ago called the gridded geese and it was paper piecing for your flying geese and when i used that particular system my geese still did not come out right and i think when i started measuring her paper it had been copied and copied and copied and so her grid wasn't accurate and i think that was why my fabric pieces were short when i cut the sizes that I was told to cut. So if you ever come across gridded geese, somebody trying to sell it on eBay or something like that, please do not buy that product. <laughs> Darling, you're gonna try to sew with your juki next week? <laughs> I, I have a friend and I'm the total opposite that, you know, she can spend money, spend thousands of dollars on, you know, new product at shows or a new machine or a new software. And then she doesn't take it out the box. And I'm the exact opposite. If I feel like if I spent my hard earned money on something, I have to get it out the box like as soon as possible. Maybe not the same minute I walk in the door. But it's going to be within a few hours of me walking into the door with uh, with the major purchase. I just bought me a new table at IKEA and spent about. I think my husband is looking for me. Are you looking for me? Are you looking for me? Okay. Did you go out? Okay. So um. I went to Ikea, bought a new table, and we got home. It must have been, I'd say, 9 p.m. or so. My husband, he has to work early in the morning, so he had to go to work, and he left me with this table. I actually got that table out the box, got that table installed, and it is in place because I was determined that I was going to have that table put up and in use. Did it all by myself. <laughs> I have a question from Aaron saying, when you when I start a quilt project and you realize that you don't like it halfway through, what do you do? A, a number of things. Sometimes when I do my scrap quilts where I have all those different type of blocks, I've done quilts where I've just stopped and then I put those into scrap quilts. I'll take those blocks, I'll cut them up and use them if they're too big in a particular spot. If they're too small, I'll add borders around them. I've made tote bags with them because when you start cutting things up, you don't see the whole part of it anymore. So I do different things but depending on what Type of thing I have. If you're just still at the unit part where you got like half square triangles or flying geese, then I could use those in a border somewhere. But if I've got entire blocks, then I would just use them as pot holders. And like I said, in sampler quilts. So if I can do a lot with them, I have a lot of extra blocks or projects that I know I'm not going to finish and I go pull them when I'm making a scrap quilt.
Yeah, Linda, uh, Linda is saying that she hated squaring up half square triangles until she got her lock block ruler. I actually purchased one of those in Paducah this year, and I haven't used that ruler yet because I haven't had to square up any half square triangles because when I have to make them from scratch because I don't have the right size because most of mine that I make from my scraps, my leftovers, they're only squaring up to one inch. And so I haven't, those would be the ones that I would square up and I haven't used any of those yet. But the ones that I make when I'm using my paper, they're already perfect, so I don't have to do that. But I do plan to use that ruler. I'm actually chain piecing on half square triangles now have a bag of them so I need to square those up so I do want to try that Darlene says she has three machines up a brother and two Berninas no room to put the Juki up oh okay so you have to figure out and the hard part of machine quilting is finding the machine that works best for you for machine quilting so it's nice when you've got two or three machines already at home because you can test it out on all the machines and see which one you like the best and that's why i did all of my machine quilting with my singer and since my singer was working i have never even attempted to free motion quilt on my baby locks And I do think that I'm actually going to buy a Bernina next year. <laughs> Sounds real crazy. And I wish I had a space that I could just put all of my machines up, but I don't. <laughs> and then I do too many crafting with me doing paper crafting. I do a little bit of crochet as well. And I'm sure we're, we're not at nine o'clock yet. We got, according to my camera, we've got about seven more minutes. So for next week, then, um, if you want to try to free motion quilt with me, let's just get like, let's just say like a 20 inch square or something. So you already have it based it for next week and we can just go from there. I actually don't do any sewing on my any quilting on my machines even my little mandela quilt that was only eight by ten i actually quilted that on my long arm machine it's so much faster because it's already set up to do that type of quilting whereas on my other machines i have to change the foot, lower the feed dogs, get, you know, figure out how it's supposed to be. So thank you, Darlene, for watching. And thanks also for chatting with me. I appreciate your time. And that's what, and that was what was so weird. It was like when I was in the other chat and nobody was in there. I'm like, well, maybe they're all busy at seven o'clock central time. Not knowing that it was waiting for me somewhere else and it didn't even announce that I was live on the other area. So I'm going to learn. This is all a learning process. So learn by the school of hard knocks. <laughs> Okay, I got one more half square triangle here. I'll square up and then I do want to just, I don't have but 40 of them on my design wall and I probably have squared up about another 40 or so. 
but I don't have these on the wall, but I'll just show you what I have for my coloration before we go. And I'm actually on my laptop now because my iPad would not open up a scheduled event. Very strange. I used my iPad last week to stitch up. Okay, so let me just go to my design wall real quick and put some of these up. I'm still here, <laughs> just trying to put some of them on the wall, and then I'll move my laptop over here just a second. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to turn the laptop to my design wall. And that's what we're working with. Ones that are in rows or the ones that I already have on the wall. And I'm making, I have coral fabric and I'm making 20 in each colorway. I have way more than what the pattern is calling for. So I wanted to have some choice when we got ready to so the ones that are scattered all around are the ones that I just squared up doing this video. And I see Darlene saying that she done some hand quilting and she's still trying to get good at it. I'm gonna tell you, people say that hand quilting relaxes them. I'm not one of those people, I actually hate it. It's a tedious, long process. I hated it. I've done one and a half quilts where I hand quilted, well, like bed size quilts. I've done one full bed size quilt and then my second whack, that blue and gold one that I just quilted this year, I had a video on it. I hand quilted part of it and I took part of it out and left some in as a reminder, but I will not be doing any hand quilting. I don't have the patience for it. So it is now 9 p.m. Central Time and I'm going to go ahead and close out this chat hopefully we can be on time next week at 7 p.m central time 8 p.m eastern time and we'll do some free motion quilting so i will see you next time and thank you all for spending your time with me tonight bye bye